It's time for new. Yeah, all right, let's do it. Starting off with, it's a simple thing. It's a USB microphone. Uh, people have seen these before, you know, before laptops came with microphones, you could get these and plug them in. Uh, and you can use them with your computer, although most computers have microphones. But what this is really useful for is for use with a Raspberry Pi, because a Raspberry Pi doesn't have audio input. And so this is kind of the easiest way to add audio input to like a BeagleBone or a Raspberry Pi or a similar, you know, single board computer type device. Um, it just shows up as an audio device, very simple. It, you know, you don't have to configure anything really, it just works. And so if you want to like turn your Raspberry Pi into like a voice recognition box, or um, you want to react to music or something, this is like a really easy thing to use and it works really great. Um, you know, it's not gonna be the, um, the best microphone for if you're far away. It, it's of course good if the sound is nice and loud or if you're close. Um, but for like, you know, five, six bucks, it's a pretty good deal. Okay. Next up. This is the opposite matching item. This is a stereo speaker box. And what's useful about this is it's USB only. So we have um, USB speakers that are powered over USB and then you plug them into a 3.5 millimeter audio jack. We also have a um, USB audio uh, adapter that gives you like line in and out headphone or, or line in and that's really useful but then you have to have an external microphone, external speakers. What's cool about this uh, is that you plug it into USB and it's both power and data. So you don't need like any other audio input. So this could be good for like if you have like a Raspberry Pi Zero or like I think the BeagleBone doesn't have an audio output at all. This gives you like super straight forward, like plug it in, it shows up, it, you know, it's speakers. You can of course use it with any computer, but we carry it for use with like a Raspberry Pi or, or similar kind of device. Um, pair this with the microphone and now you have like a, you know, a simple AV setup. Um, it's not the least expensive way to do it, but it's kind of the easiest. I like the simplicity of not requiring a separate cable for um, the audio control. And then you can control the volume directly from your computer because it just shows up as a you know an all set device. Okay. All right. Next up. Okay. This is um, a pretty handy thing if you have a really old TV or you have um, you know a, a projector or some like weird old console system or I don't know something that basically only has RCA you know NTC or PAL inputs. So this is a device that will take. HDMI video from your Raspberry Pi. You can usually use it with your Xbox or your, your PlayStation or your um, your Chromebook or whatever. Anything that you have off the shelf that has HDMI output, and it shows up as a like a 720p monitor or maybe it's a 1080p monitor. And then what it does is it will strip out the audio, so it takes the audio out of the HDMI, which is kind of nice, and it gives it to you as left and right channel. And then you can also have NTSC or PAL output. You can switch which one you want, and you, it basically just works on any TV. So it's just handy for, um, a lot of times, you know, you'll have like, a, a, you know, a classroom or something, or, you know, your parents maybe have a really old, you know, rear projection TV, and it doesn't have HDMI input. Um, if it has RCA input, which almost everything does these days, uh, this is your bag. Also, sometimes, you know, if you want to do uh, video capture, it might be easier to video capture. Um, or strip the audio out of HDMI. This could be an easy way to do it. And it's like not very expensive. It's like 20 bucks or less. Yeah. Works really well. It's very plug and play. It just shows up as a monitor with audio and then you just get the audio out. Okay. Audio and video out. Just when you think the ultimate GPS can get more ultimate, it got more ultimate. We have a little update to this. Um, this is the version three. It's not like a huge change. Oh, can you go back? Um, yeah. I'm, back I'm, one. Okay. I'm, 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 so it's uh, still the version three. Um, oh, can you go forward one? Yeah, sure. The big change really is I added a shock key protection diode to um, the battery. Um, the data sheet when I first when they first came out didn't mention this. Later, data sheet revision said, hey, you know, you should put a shock key diode to protect the battery. Never had an issue, but you know what? 
you know, wanted to do a quick revision to make um, the pads for the GPS stick out a little bit more so we had um, less need for rework on these modules. While I was at it, I added that diode. doesn't affect 99.9% .9 of users, but uh, it's there anyways. The GPS itself is the exact same firmware. It acts exactly the same. All the voltages, the pinouts, functionality is the same. Um, the shape is the same. I didn't really change the size. I made the mounting holes a little bit bigger to match our standard uh, 0.1 inch um, mounting hole size. It still comes with the coin battery that you can solder on the back. And as you can see here, the ground plane, I made it a lot bigger and I added a lot of more um, stitching holes. There's now a full ground plane on the front and back. According to the data sheet, this will help you know, give you maybe like a dB or two more um, reception when using the internal battery. Does it? You know, I couldn't notice any difference, but uh, I now basically follow the data sheet more clearly on its suggestion. So it does work at least as good, probably better. A um, little update, no change in price, but there's a couple of updates enough that I wanted to bump it up and talk about them. Okay. Um, next up, are you ready? Yeah. There's more. This is the, what's it called again? The, the Pi the Ethernet. Pi Ethernet yeah. or Pi Jack. Yeah, yeah it's the Pi like Jack. Um, so this is an add-on for the Raspberry Pi Zero, although it'll actually work with any Raspberry Pi. Like A, uh, A Plus doesn't have Ethernet, so you can use it with a Raspberry Pi A Plus. And it adds Ethernet. I think it does it over the SPI pins. Um, so it's a little bonnet thing that you pop on top of your uh, Raspberry Pi probably the Raspberry Pi Zero, adds Ethernet, very durable, you know, wired internet connection. You don't have to worry about Wi-Fi. Um, you don't have to worry about like setting up passwords or whatever. You just plug it in and it just works. It's really handy. I do prefer Ethernet if I can get it just because, you know, you don't have as much trouble as you do with Wi-Fi. Uh, you just have to have a cable. So this is a fully assembled um, bonnet, fat, whatever it's called, plug it on, works great. I think you just have to uh, tell it about the device tree overlay, um, but it's like one line in your config file and, and you're ready to go. Okay. Uh, next up, I just got this in right before the show. Yeah, this is the last last edition. This is a um, cape for the BeagleBone. Actually, that was a pretty nice cape. I don't carry a lot of BeagleBone capes, but this one was well done. It's a capacitive touch. One you, I can we have show it so off. many different overheads tonight. Well, so, whichever one you want so to yeah, show. So yeah, um, we're trying out another overhead. Let's try this one. And um, so, by the way, this, you can um, back it's out. It's a manual focus? Yeah, that's the, that's the goal with okay, this. So, um, you know, you, as soon as you want to figure out where you get it, you can do it that way, and then you okay. can, and then you can. Whoa, sorry. So this is, this, that's over now. Things are breaking. You just dropped Instagram. I just killed everybody. Yeah. Okay. Wow. <laughs> okay, so we won't use that other one. Yeah. Because you don't, you don't seem to like it. Well, there's just a lot going on here. Okay. So. Okay. Sorry for everybody. I broke it. Um, so what's nice is that you... you can zoom in if you want. I don't and then need to once zoom you in. Do, zoom then out. you can autofocus out. So. Okay. Can you zoom out? Yeah. But okay. then, wait. So then there's, it tilts this way, too. So okay. depending on what you want to do. All right. Well, it's a fancy new overhead. Yeah. Just figure out. So that, you know, figure out what you want to do. Okay. Great. So um, it's a K plugs into your BeagleBone, BeagleBone Black. I think it's the only one that's really available. And uh, what's nice is there's no drivers required. You just plug it in, and it automatically works. It loads the device tree uh, fragment to have it display. It uses a ton of the pins, like all these pins. Um, it uses a TFT display, but it also adds uh, capacitive touch, so it's kind of nice. You can, um, you know, launch programs and stuff. Uh, you can interact with it close programs, whatever. Uh, all capacitive touch has a nice feeling to it. Um, not too expensive. I, I thought the quality was really good. So if you want to add a display to your uh, BeagleBone block, this is a nice one. It comes with the display too, which is cool. You get that. You get the cape and display all in one and uh, nice functionality. So this is the, the simple demo of it, but I like it. We don't carry a lot for the BeagleBone block, but I thought this was a good addition. Okay. And then last up, the star of the show tonight, besides you, Lady Ada, is why we have the code DFREEDOM. It's the NINDOFF. Of uh, degrees of freedom. Yeah. Yes, so this, is, this, thing? this is uh, the LSM 9DS1, 9 degree of freedom. This is an ST micro 
uh, sensor chip. It actually is three sensors in one. You get an accelerometer, a magnetometer, and a gyroscope all in one, uh, three degrees each. So it's three sensors, three degrees each, nine degrees total. XYZ of acceleration, mag magnification, magnification, magneticness, compass, whatever uh, words, and then a uh, uh, gyroscope for twist. Um, we've already carried the LSM9DS0, so this is the LSM9DS1, but I would like to warn people, just because there's a, the number is one more than the LSM9DS0 does not mean it's a better sensor. It is a less expensive sensor. Um, the 9DS1 is like a couple bucks less, so if you're looking for just the least expensive 9DOF sensor, this is it. I've never seen a cheaper 9DOF sensor than this. It's also a teeny bit smaller than the LSM9DS0. However, the quality is a little degraded. Um, not significantly, but you know the the gyro is slightly less accurate. The um, accelerometer is a little less accurate, and the magnetometer I think is also a little less accurate. You still get for most maker projects, and you're not going to notice the difference is maybe like one or two percent um, accuracy different. But you know, again, it, it is less expensive for a reason. It's less expensive because it's a little less accurate. That said. It, you know, it's a very simple, easy to use 9 off sensor. We have a full library that will get you uh, the raw data from it. It has a bunch of interrupts if you would like to use it. Um, it's pretty straightforward. And I think, you know, as long as you're not expecting like, okay, I want to be able to, uh, you know, have my $500, $5,000 drone be able to use this for orientation, maybe not $5,000 drone quality, more like a $50 drone quality uh, nine off sensor. But that said, it does work really well. And for people who want to get something for 15 bucks, this is it. Okay. So that's it. That's it. Those are the new parts of the week. Thank you, Lady Ada. You did it.